One of my favorite parts of my job is getting to interview people in the AI space. It's super fun and I like to prepare as much as I can so I can ask them questions that they haven't been asked before. However, in order to prepare, I found myself going through the same motions. Check their Twitter, check their recent blog posts, check YouTube interviews that they've done beforehand. And this gets kind of time consuming. And I thought to myself, man, this is a perfect use case for a language model. And even better, it would be awesome if I could host this on Streamlit so that I could have an application that I could use whenever I wanted. In this video, we're going to cover how to make your own LLM assisted researcher so you could save time on consolidating your own research. You could use this for sales email inspiration, recruiting calls, job interview calls, or if you're going to interview somebody yourself. We're going to cover the main building blocks in a Jupyter notebook, then we're going to go deploy this on Streamlit and you're going to get the full code. Let's jump into it. All right, first thing we're gonna do is import our packages. We got a whole bunch of Langchain stuff here between prompt templates, our chat open AI, because we're gonna use GPT-4, our recursive character text splitter, which is a mouthful, but that is gonna split our documents for us. And then we're also gonna use the load summarize chain. Now we're gonna do this with custom prompts, so it won't really be a summary per se, but you'll see what we're talking about here in a second. We're gonna import Tweepy, which is our Twitter library. This is optional, you don't need uh, if you don't need to do this if you don't want to. We're gonna import some scraping libraries, and so requests, beautiful soup, and then also Markdownify. We're gonna bring in some YouTube videos and the transcripts from those, and so we're gonna bring in Langchain's document loader for YouTube. And then we're just gonna do some light environment variables. Let's run that. And then so first thing we're gonna do is load up our uh, uh, environment variable keys. So these are all for the Twitter API. Again, if you don't have this, you don't need to do it, you can just comment this piece of the code out, but it'd be helpful if you did. And then we have our OpenAI API key. And in order to complete this tutorial, you definitely should have that one. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull our data from Twitter. Now this code may seem um, familiar because we did the same exact code in our Twitter AI bot tutorial, which you can go check out the link that's over here. But this isn't a tutorial about how to necessarily do the Twitter API. So I'm gonna kind of blow through this. Um, we're gonna get the original tweets. And so we're gonna pass it a screen name. So this would be like at Greg Cameron or at Elad Gill. We'll go through that, we'll set up Tweepy. We're gonna go grab the results themselves. We're gonna run through the results. And I don't wanna do any retweets or quote tweets. And so I'm actually going to uh, just continue on those. I'm not going to add them to our list. I only want to do the regular full tweets. We're going to sort them based on likes. So the best ones come up at the top and then we're going to return the user tweets. All right. So here's the cool part. I want to test this out here. Now for this tutorial, we're going to pretend like we're going to go interview Elad Gill. The reason why I chose him is because he has a large online presence. All right, let's go ahead and try this one. So we're going to get original tweets and we're going to pass in Elad Gill's username, and it is not defined. Wonderful, I forgot to do that one. Let's give it a sec here. All right, so we have his first tweet. Well, it's just the first 300 characters. So more AI companies of sudden virality, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This would be probably his top tweet uh, as of recently. And we have a bunch of user tweets, but this is just the, uh, the first 300 characters here. Next, what I want to do is I want to pull some data from some websites. So for this one, I'm going to create another function called pull from websites, and it's just going to take a URL. It's going to make a request to that URL, and then it's going to convert it into to a beautiful soup object for us. We're gonna get the text. And then one key tip that I learned from Eugene who runs Core is to convert your text into Markdown. So this will remove all the HTML markup, which is uh, a bit adding a bit more noise than you'd like. So there we go. Now what we're gonna do here is I wanna be able to pass multiple uh, URLs in order to get the information from multiple places. So for this one, I'm gonna say URLs are gonna be eladgill.com because this actually happens to have a lot on his background. And then also a blog post that he put together around defensibility and competition, which uh, is one of my favorites that I like. And so we're gonna create an empty string. We're gonna pass in our URLs and we're gonna say for URL in URLs, Here's the text from the website, and then go and add that text to your website data. Great, so it's done, and let's see what the first couple characters looks like. So this is, looks like it's from its home, his homepage, and he says, welcome to Eli Gill's retro homepage. Who am I? Technology, I'm an investor advisor. So we get a lot of really good information about who this person is, and we're gonna be able to make some really cool interview questions from this. Okay. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull data from YouTube. So in order to do this one, I'm gonna use Langchain's document loader for YouTube videos. We got our YouTube loader right here. We're gonna say from YouTube URL, we're gonna pass in the URL, and then we're gonna add some extra video info on here. We're gonna load our document, and then I need to transform this instead of it being a document. I just wanna have some text because we're gonna throw this in a prompt later. So we're gonna pass back the transcript. Let's run that. And then here is our YouTube URL that I looked uh, at beforehand. Um, so I only have one URL here, but I'm gonna say for video URL in URLs, video text equals go get the text. And then we're gonna add that to our empty string right there. 
Great, let's see what this video transcript looks like. All right, I like to say that startups are an act of desperation. Now that we have all our data, let's combine this into a single information block. So I'm gonna have a variable here called user information. I'm gonna pass in the tweets that we got. I'm gonna pass in the website data that we got, and then also the YouTube data as well. Now we have our user information. Wonderful. However, this user information, because we pulled websites and tweets and YouTube videos, it's likely gonna be a little long for uh, our language model here. So I need to split our text. I'm gonna uh, initialize our recursive character text splitter, and I'm gonna say chunk size of 20,000, which this is 20,000 characters, which is gonna be roughly 5,000 tokens. So it's quite large. Um, what you'll want to do is, is you want to adjust this for whatever language model you're using, depending on the costs and uh, and all that. And you know, instead of chunk overlap 10%, I'm going to do that just 20%. Let's go ahead and create that. Let's create our documents and let's see how many documents we have. We now have three documents that user information has been split up into. Okay. Now here's where uh, it starts to get pretty interesting because we're going to make some custom map reduce prompts. So in order to go over these three documents, I need to tell the language model what information I want to extract from it. Now if we just use the standard standard load summarize chain, it's going to say, hey, can you please summarize these three chunks for me? And that's not quite what I want. I want it to pull out interview questions for this person based off of those three different chunks. Now, if you have more questions around the MapReduce method, I have a whole video on OpenAI workarounds for uh, token limit lengths, and I go over MapReduce in there uh, in detail. So for this map prompt, let me step you through my thinking just a little bit. You're a helpful AI bot that aids a user in research. Now, I really like to assign a role to the AI so it knows who it's acting as. Below is information about a person, and then we have a person's name here. So this is a token that we will then insert Elad Gill's name into. The reason why I did that is because if I were to stay general, below is information about a person, well, it's it's not so bad. I just want to give it more crisp instructions. And so I'm going to pass the person's name in here. Uh, information will include tweets, interview transcripts, and blog posts about Elad. Your goal is to generate interview questions that we can ask about or go ask Elad. Use specifics from the research when possible. And then start of information, end of information. The reason why I put these two with uh, percentage signs is because I wanted to know uh, when the ELAD information starts and when it ends because I'm going to be putting in a few more instructions here after the fact. So I don't want to get confused with the information. Please respond with a list of a few interview questions based on the topics above. And then I say your response. Okay. This is our map prompt. So it's going to go over those three different chunks and it's going to get us this information. Then with the response of those three chunks, it's going to combine that or it's going to put that into the combined prompt right in the text section right here. You're a helpful AI bot that aids in research. You will be given a list of, list of potential interview questions that we can ask Elad. So the reason why, this isn't just raw text anymore. This is gonna be the interview questions that we had up in the map step up above. And so we, now we have interview questions and then really I should be saying your response. Let's do that. Great, and you can see here with the prompt templates, I kind of brushed over this, but we have placeholders for text and we have placeholders for the person name, person's name that's gonna go right there. Then we're gonna uh, initialize our language model and I'm putting temperature 0.25. So this adds just a little bit more flair on top of the temperature rather than just, just zero. But I encourage you to experiment. You may bump this all the way up to one and have some fun with it, but who knows. Model name, GPT-4, uh, you can use 3.5 on here if you want to. Language model, uh, chain type map reduce. And then the cool part here is we're going to pass in our map prompt template, which is our custom prompt from up above, and then our combined prompt template. Let's run this. Okay, cool. So the reason why that ran so quick is this just made our chain for us and it got us ready to start running it. We won't actually run it until we pass in this information. Now, we're going to pass in two different, or two different parameters, if you will. Uh, the first one is going to be input documents. So it's going to be our docs. These are the three docs that we had up above, which is information about Elad. And then we're going to pass in the person's name, which is Elad Gill here. So that'll get dynamically, well, I guess not really dynamically, but that'll get placed, placed into our prompt templates. Now you may be asking, well, Greg, why'd you put it here? And why didn't you just put it in the prompt itself? Well, because we're going to do some different people here in a second when we get the streamlit. And I didn't want to put in too many bad habits here. Let's run this and I will see you when this comes out here. It, it does take a little bit, so don't worry if it uh, takes a long time for you. All right, so we just finished up here. Let's see what the output text is. What key factors do you consider when investing or advising AI startups? Can you share examples of successful AI startups that have bootstrapped their growth? All right, cool. So we have, looks like a good amount of questions here. We have about 21 different questions. Now, what I found by doing this a few times is that they're not necessarily copy and paste ready, meaning you're not just gonna go this and put on the front page of the New York Times. However, 
it should inspire a lot of really good questions within yourself. And then you can add on your own voice or your own flair on top of it. All right, so this is great in a Jupyter Notebook. It's really good for testing, but the cool part is when we add it to Streamlit. So let's go add it to Streamlit ourselves. All right, so now we're over on the Streamlit side and we can't upload Jupyter Notebooks to Streamlit. And that would be kind of cool, but it probably is a good thing because it would get really messy. So we're gonna upload just a single script right here. Now, you'd likely split this out into multiple scripts if you're doing this in production. However, for clarity and for conciseness, um, we're just doing one. All right, so we're gonna import our packages just like beforehand. This is basically just a port over of the Jupyter code that we had beforehand, but it assumes a little bit more edge case scenario as users start to input information. So let's run through it. We're gonna import our packages just as beforehand. We're gonna load up our API keys just as before. We're gonna get the original tweets. We're gonna pull from the website and we're gonna get the video transcripts. These are just exact replicas of the, of the code that we saw beforehand to go get our data. But one thing I wanted to add was actually let the language model give us multiple types of feedback, depending on which one the user selected. So I wanted to have different response types. You could have interview questions, which is the example that we saw in the Jupyter Notebook, but what if you just want a one page summary on this person? Maybe you don't want interview questions, you just want to know about them in the first place. Now, based off of a radio button on Streamlit, which we'll see in just a second here, we're going to get a different output back. So for interview questions, we're going to say, your goal is to generate interview questions that we can ask them. Please respond with a list of a few interview questions based off of the topics above. Or for the one page summary, your goal is to generate a one page summary about them. Please respond with a few short paragraphs that would prepare somebody to talk to the person. So depending on what the user selects, we're going to go ahead and select one of these different uh, items here and put that dynamically into our prompt. Okay. Now with our map prompt, this is the same exact one you saw up above, except now we have the response type. So this response type is going to get replaced with one of these two different selections here, depending on what the user says. So we have our map prompt and we have our map prompt template. Okay, great. We have our combined prompt with our response prompt right there. Okay, cool. And then let's jump into the Streamlit side of the house. Now, in order to show this, let me actually pull up Streamlit so we can have it side by side. All right, so remember, if you wanna run a Streamlit application, all that you need to do is say Streamlit run and then main.py. And I already navigated to where this code is being held here. Let's run this. All right, and then what we get popped up for us is actually the script that's running. But I'm gonna move this to the side just so we can see some more information for us here. If you want a full tutorial on how Streamlit works, I have a intro to Streamlit beginner tutorial that introduces the core concepts of Streamlit with Langchain and link for that is in the description if you wanna go check it out. But here what we have is our header. So Streamlit header, LLM assisted interview prep. That is gonna be this information up here. Now if I were to change this, I would put a two right here and save that. It's gonna notice that I had a change here and I could either rerun it once or always rerun. And I'm gonna always rerun so that updates for me no matter what. Let me go ahead and delete that too because that's not helpful. Go ahead and run that, okay, cool. And so I just have an intro here. I'd say about some uh, technologies that we're using. I have a fun picture, but then I introduced Larry, the LLM researcher. So like I said beforehand, I introduced a radio button and this radio button is gonna be the output type that we want. So do you want interview questions or do you want a one page summary? Yeah, and then what I have is different inputs for the user to input uh, information about the person they want. So for example, I have the person's name, I have the Twitter username, and that is my username. We don't we don't necessarily want that. We don't do this to Elad Gill, Elad Gill. And I'm just changing the placeholder within the text input for Twitter. If I save that, you can see that that gets changed for us right here. These are videos about Elad. And then lastly, we want, um, and there we are, we have Elad's information that's there. So let's go over uh, again one more time and look at the code behind this so that we could uh, understand what's going on here. So I won't go through every single line of code here, but just to go through the big parts, I'm gonna create a button indicator. So over here, we have this generate output button. And once this is clicked, the page is gonna reload. It's gonna read it from top to bottom. And if it is clicked, then this button indicator is gonna be true as opposed to false. So if this button indicator is true, it means the button that was it was just clicked. And then I'm gonna check to make sure that there's actually links that the user has submitted. If not, I'm going to throw a little bit of a fit. And then I'm going to ask if there's the open AI key is set. Either it's an environment variable or they placed it themselves. Uh, if not, it'll throw a fit as well. And then we're going to go grab some data. So we're going to get the user tweets, the video text, the website data from each uh, one of the sources they, they gave. And then we're going to put that into a user information, just a big long string. We're going to change that into docs. So it's going to split up into those three docs like we had beforehand. Could be more. Then we're going to go through and we're going to load up our language model. So this uses the load LLM function that we had up above. 
above. We're going to create our summarize chain, same exact thing as beforehand, map reduce chain type, and then we're going to have our map prompt and our combined prompt as well. Now, I put in a few breadcrumbs on here so we could see the app that was running. So after this gets, um, after the chain gets loaded up, we're going to say sending to the LLM because this is what's actually going to do the sending for us. And if we scroll up above into our uh, like say the tweet one, for example, I say getting tweets right here so we can actually follow along with what the program is doing. We're going to input our uh, input documents, which is going to be the user information docs that we had up above. This is split from our user information. We're going to put in the person's name, which is just going to be a field that's going to be set right there. And then we're going to take our response type. Now, the cool part about this is this response types is the dictionary that we had up above. And we're going to call the key of what is selected right here. So if we go back up, we have these interview questions that's set right here, corresponds to interview questions that's right here, and then one page summary is the one page summary that's right here. So we'll see what the user ends up selecting on that one. All right, now then we're gonna just put a delineation for the output right here, and then once the language model is done, we're actually gonna get the output text that gets sent right there. All right, and if you want to try this out yourself, I put three different people on here between Elad, Sophia, and Sean, and you can go ahead and grab this information and input it into here, but let's go and do this ourselves. For this one, since we've already done Elad, let's do Sean. All right, so I just input all of Sean's information, his name, Twitter, YouTube, webpage, and let's go ahead and generate, you know, let's do a one-page summary on this case. We're gonna go ahead and generate a one-page summary about Sean, generate. All right, now we have a response. Sean Perry is a prominent entrepreneur, investor, and podcaster with significant social media presence, especially Twitter. Nice. So we have a pretty good background on who Sean is as a co-host of My First Million. Yeah, this is actually pretty good. So if you're getting ready to meet Sean, this would be a really awesome thing to get sped up in the first place. Let's go ahead and change this to interview questions, and let's see what interview questions there are for Sophia. All right, just input Sophia's information. Let's go ahead and generate this. All right, we have a response here. So what was the turning point that made you decide to launch Nasty Gal? How'd you go about selecting the vintage clothes with piecing you'd sell on eBay? Nice, okay. All right, so I've already made a repo for this, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add both these. I'm gonna commit and I'm gonna push. All right, so that just went, that just was pushed over there. Let's go check GitHub and let's go see, we have LLM Research Assistant. So we have just right now, just updated right there. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the URL for my main.py, which is what you need to do for your Streamlit apps. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and copy this one right here. Then I'm gonna head over to Streamlit and I'm gonna sign in. After I sign in, I can see my other apps that I've done, but I'm actually gonna go ahead and create a new app. So in, for this one, I'm just gonna paste a GitHub URL and I wanna just paste in uh, the exact URL that I just had for the main.py and I'm gonna say deploy. So after I say deploy, it says your app is in the oven, which is great because I like cookies. And down here you can do the manage app and go ahead and click that and it's preparing your system and provisioning the machine and everything. In a second here, you'll see that it's actually gonna be updating all of the, uh, or I should say installing all the requirements that were in the uh, requirements doc, which I went ahead and did a pip freeze over here for you so you don't need to redo that if you go ahead and copy this code. All right, so let me come back to you when this app is deployed. All right, so now our app has actually been deployed and you can tell because up at the URL that we have right here, I might go clean this up, but we'll see uh, about that. We have the same app that we had above and let's just double check that it works. I'm actually gonna do Elad Gill on the summary because we haven't done a summary yet. Let's just go get his information. All right, so now we have the one page summary for Elad. Let's go and in, insert that and go generate output. One thing I did forgot to mention is that I, you can see here that it does not have my open AI API key and it does not have the uh, Tweepy. Um, as well. So if you go up to the hamburger menu up above and you click view all apps, let's go back to our apps homepage here. And then on this app that we had just created, I'm going to say uh, settings, and then I'm going to go to secrets. Now on the secret side, this is where you can uh, put your environment variables. I'm going to go ahead and do that here. So we, uh, so we have them. All right. So back here, after I did my environment variables, we insert the information again. Let's generate this one page summary, getting tweets, getting YouTube videos, getting web pages, two web pages, because there's two of them here and sending to the LLM for our one page summary. All right, we have a return here. Elad Gill is a highly respected AI expert and thought leader in the technology space, often sharing his thoughts on Twitter and his blog. Nice. This is a pretty good summary about him as well. So now we have the information that we need to go and do a successful interview. All right, crew. So that is how you consolidate the information gathering process and put it on a streamlet so that you can have a tool for your own personal use here. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments. Or if you have any general feedback at all, I'd love to know what you think. And as always, please share any of the work that you end up building with me, either via email or on Twitter. I love to see it and I would love for the community to see it. All right, crew. We'll see you later.